What up, YouTube? Topaz Ace back for another review, and this one is to that Beyonce Homecoming. And you know, I already made a review for this when this performance first happened last year, which this is her Coachella performance, where in this particular one, man, the giving us multiple different angles, they recorded on multiple days, that's why the colors are changing within their clothing and all of that stuff, man. And it gives you a much more immersive feel of what they did. And in my review that I had for it back then, I said that this was amazing, one of the best performances that I've seen from anybody, man. But with this project, you get to see why she went with this theme and how they built it up from scratch. And even though it's a two hour plus movie and the soundtrack got like 40 some tracks up on it and you can find that on Spotify there too, man. Like it's all completely worth it because of the quality that there is. But first, what I really enjoy is how she gives us the reason for the concept and everything around it because we clearly could see just by watching the performance that this was all HBCU like step team like a straight up HBCU performance piece that if you've ever gone to a historically black college and all of that stuff dude that you would have gone to one of these performances at one point in time whether it's at a football game or whether it's at like a little show piece where they're doing the steppers and all of that stuff, dude. Like you would have seen bits and pieces of all of it. But yet she brought it all together. And the reason why she brought it all together, as she said in the movie, is because she always wanted to go to a HBCU. But yet her college life was ultimately her with Destiny's Child going out there performing and building up who she is musically and all of this stuff, dude. To go along with the fact that she is the first black woman to headline at Coachella, she wanted to bring forth all of the black culture that was within HBCUs and all of this. And do it on one of the most epic levels possible to the point that even like with Coachella just passing and stuff, they had Ariana Grande and I didn't watch it, but I heard that it was pathetic. I heard that, honestly, she shouldn't have even have tried because you can't follow up what Beyonce did. As this is a great lesson in merchandising and marketing and all of this stuff, dude, because she knew this was going to be one of the most epic things possible. So they went on ahead and paid for the camera angles and all of this stuff and the background footage because they had to have been doing this well before like all of the practices that they did they had to film all of this and they had to be practicing for this particular show for months so they were filming and getting all of this ready so that now a year later after the fact that they can go ahead and drop this video and i was watching it with my uncle and such man and we broke out into a discussion as he was saying you know beyonce she was hot when she first came in but it's unheard of for someone to go straight through the career being as notable and popular like her popularity has not taken a downturn at all throughout her entire career as she's going and what my uncle was saying like you know that's off the strength of Jay-Z and what's funny is he said that right as Jay-Z was being in a cameo of the video and all of this stuff but my thing that I told Unc was like, I can't really co-sign that. Like, I believe that Beyonce was ultimately talented and she was eventually going to get to this point. But yet, I do recognize Jay-Z's fingerprint on a whole bunch of stuff. It's like, them together, they came together to form maybe the most power couple that ever was and they used that through the music and they used that through everything that they do. But I'm not going to discredit that Beyonce could have been great on her own. She could have possibly made it to this point as well. But she in her own right tells us that if it wasn't for Jay-Z, that she wouldn't be as polished of a person as she is as she said that in her music. So it is what it is. But I will say the main thing that I really enjoyed about this video outside of like what I saw off of the stream and all of that stuff is how much they put in the background, like 
how they built it up from scratch, how they went out and got all of these individual musicians and all that stuff from the actual HBCUs and brought them in and just wanted them to do them and have fun and they just go ahead and build from there. They wanted to see what everybody had to offer. They wanted everybody to feel the energy of everyone coming together to do things like stepping, to do things like the drum lines and just to wild out through the dance and all of that. And everybody was sitting there having so much fun. But yet you gotta realize this was all work for everybody though. Like, if you're not having this much fun while you're working, then you're doing it wrong. You feel me? Like, Beyonce has been working hard her entire life to become the musician that she is, but you clearly see through things like this and through things like her videos and the music that she does, man, that she really loves to do it. Like, she wakes up every day so that she can do it, and she's as excited with it today as she was when she was younger. Like, this is the type of passion that we wish we could bottle up, but it's that type of passion that you need to go through with every day of your life, man, for anything that you're really trying to do out here. Uh, other things that I like about the video, uh, having the actual people speak, like from the dancers and from the, the chick who was twirling the baton and all. I never knew what their names and all of that stuff was. And then you got to hear some famous people deliver some pretty potent quotes, like Tessa Thompson in there saying some things, man. And which all of this added to the entire package to make it more feel like a documentary more than just the stream that we would have seen just if we just watched the Coachella stream. Now a side note though, one thing about it that it has nothing to do with the video or the music or anything like that. Just the whole college lifestyle of how many people feel like they have to go and live through the HBCUs and all of that stuff man. Just to understand the culture. And you know, it, it does add to certain things like I personally wanted to go to such. Like, there's a historical black college here in Charlotte. Johnson C. Smith University, man. And, you know, I really wanted to go there. Like, I was actually going through a community college, man. And I went and got my degree. And I'm like, okay, I can transfer this over to the HBCU. Or I could transfer it over to UNCC and all of this stuff, man. And ultimately, I realized through the price that all of these colleges had and that they was acting shady about my actual transcript and the classes that I took, they wanted me to retake them, man. I kind of came to the realization that college life is a bit overrated because they hitting you in the head for the paper and all of that stuff, dude. And I mean, I wish I could have had the fun just like Beyonce wishes she could have been there, man. But who wouldn't trade the lifestyle of an HBCU student to be Beyonce? And then understand some of the things that like a couple of dancers were saying. Like one dancer said that she got pregnant and she missed out a whole year of dancing. Like you tend to get caught up in colleges, not just with the debt, but in other things with the lifestyle and all that dude. Like you don't necessarily need to go through and do that. But the last things that I want to talk about here too would be the actual soundtrack because there was a few bonus tracks on at the very end of this 40 track soundtrack right here where she did a cover for Frankie Beverly and Maze that Before I Let Go and then how the production shifts in there man that makes it that much doper and she does the thing like see this is something that you know it's just an unwritten law there's certain songs that newer artists just can't touch and that's Earth, Wind and Fire Frankie Beverly and Mays, a uh, whole bunch of other individual like classic music, like these artists out here, it's not that you're not allowed to touch it, it's just people won't show you no love at all, won't listen to your stuff if you try to remix or cover the stuff, you feel me? But yet, Beyonce does such a phenomenal job at it. There ain't no way anybody can complain. And then you kind of got to be on the stardom level of what Beyonce is in order to touch it, I guess. And then the last bonus track was that I've been on where this is her quote unquote spitting. Well, eh, nah, nah, I'm not respecting it, but it's screwed up, no chop. And then in there, she's just going through trying to spit a little bit and then giving shout outs to rappers from UGK and all of that. Like, I like the respect. I love all of that. But 
I'm not really feeling that whole track. But overall, man, this joint was excellent. Definitely worth the two hours plus to go ahead and watch the video. And then the time to go ahead and listen to it all the way through Spotify, man. Definitely quality, man. This is something that everyone should enjoy because this is like a classic performance that we may never see again. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there. And you can go to DownloadPads.com, that's down there, to read today's article.